Hi there, Sandra here from Create in Spain with a quick card. Now this one I have to credit Kay Werner for the idea. Now although she uses dyes to do something like this, I've altered it so that it's actually a cut file and I've changed the way that it's done a little bit. So if you want to watch Kay Werner's video, I'll put a link to that below. And here I'm just going to start on the card that I've done. So I have an oversized card base. This just happens to be a piece of card that was bigger than a card base would normally be for me, but not enormous. So I just decided to use that as a card base to start with. And I have these strips. Now you can see there's a letter H on there. And what I want to do is to put it down on this card and the chances are I will trim the top and the bottom off afterwards, but I might not. So I'm going to put it roughly where the centre would be. Now you'll notice that I have a line drawn here and that's simply so that I get my strips on straight because I know what it's like if I don't have a guideline I won't get them straight. Now I've used one of these rulers to do it and it's quite simple because you put your sliding ruler along the fold edge and you just allow it to roll back and unless you really do something awful then this will roll back in a perfectly straight line from where you started it off. So that makes it quite easy to do a line. So just going to put some glue on the back of this. I'm using a no wrinkle glue. And this is one that I get locally. Use whatever glue you find to be the best. But because my card base isn't very thick, I wanted to make sure I didn't get wrinkles on it. But it's a bit too fiddly to want to do it with double-sided tape. Now I've cut my pieces out from glitter card. And the card that I use, although I get it locally, is really good stuff because it's actually quite smooth. You don't lose bits of glitter and it's really easy to cut. It cuts really nicely. Now, when I devised this file and cut it out, it did cut pretty much as I expected it to cut. But one thing that I did change on some of the letters, like in the H here, there is a tiny little gap where it defines the letter. And I didn't think it was quite enough. So when I tidied up the file, I made that gap a little bit bigger. So it's a little more obvious when you make it up. So that's just an improvement that I've done on this one. Okay, so where you can't see the gap on this particular file, on the one that you download, you'll be able to see the gap better and it gives the letters more definition. And this is the next one. All these bits have been cut from scraps, which means this is quite a good card to make if you have little bits and pieces of things left over. Let's put it down well. And you just keep on going like this until you've finished the whole design. So you could actually make a few of these in one go simply by doing multiple cuts and then just assemble them all afterwards. Now this one I've chosen to do the word hello because I think at the moment it is a word that we're not using very much because we're not actually seeing many people and I figured we might well be sending cards out to people we wouldn't normally be sending cards to. So it isn't a Christmas one, it's not a birthday one, it's just a hi there, how you doing type card. Now, nearly done on here, just got one more piece out of this one. Now if you want to do your own design with a different word, the way that I did it was I made strips, identical strips in file format obviously Oops. to start off with. Used a nice chunky font. I think this is actually chunk five. Um, it's a nice bulky font because you want a nice bulky font to do this. And then I welded the letters onto the strips, duplicated everything a couple of times 
and then you simply subtract, subtract one strip from the next one to it to get the cutout pieces. And that's why you have to duplicate it, because once you've duplicated it, you've lost the one that you actually used to subtract. subtract. It's always a good idea to make your main components, duplicate them a couple of times, put them on a different page if need be, to the one that you're working on just so you have those duplicates ready to go if you suddenly realise you need it. And of course it needs to be identical to what you've already done because otherwise none of it's going to work. So there we are. That's already looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with the way that's going. So the other thing that I've done is I have stamped a sentiment. Now this particular sentiment was stamped on a blue card, would you believe, and not with ink. See, it's actually blue. All I did, because I didn't have a scrap of black card, I simply coloured my blue card with some black ink. Now I think I need to actually trim that down a little bit. And because it's a small thing, I'm just going to do that with scissors. Hopefully I won't wreck it. And as I said, I used the paints. It's an acrylic paint to stamp. The reason I used it is because it's kind of like a metallic -y paint, which is rather attractive. And all I did was I used one of the Tim Holtz tools and I put a dab of paint on a tile, picked it up and then just dabbed it over my stamp. And it works really nicely and it gives you this lovely metallic look. So I put my double sided foam tape on the base there and just going to pop that in place. Now my pencil lines I can erase. It looks effective, it's a great card for the guys as well as the ladies, particularly in the colours I've done it, they're not very feminine colours anyway. And it's a nice thing to send when you can't see the people that you care about. That's it, thanks for watching, take care now, bye bye.